Hey, how's it going? So today I wanted to show you something my friend George was asking me about, which is um, he wanted to use a Google spreadsheet, uh, a Google sheet, as the basis of his database for his web app. And so we figured out how to do this, um, pulling in a Google sheet as a database and using it in a static single page web app. And uh, I wanted to show you how to do this. So we're going to start with this basic, this is at uh, slingcode.net uh, online HTML editor. And we're going to start with this basic HTML page. This is pretty much the default page that comes up when you create a new web app in Slingcode. And uh, what we want to do is uh, create a new place for some data to go. So we're going to create this basic page where with a list of say items pulled out of our spreadsheet. Um, our spreadsheet's empty at the moment. So I've just gone in here and gone in Google Docs, create new spreadsheet. And we're gonna list out all the items that we'll create on this page. So these could be like products or um, any other kind of data that you wanna show. Um, and of course, being able to update it in a spreadsheet is very quick and easy. So let's get started. Basically, the first thing we're gonna do is just create a little bit more info here. So we're gonna say, I'm gonna create an H2 tag, which says items. Um, you know, just to tell the user what they're looking at. Uh, and then we're going to create an area, a tag, a main tag. And this is where we're going to put our actual um, content that comes out from the Google spreadsheet. So we've got this page with items and we're going to make a list. Let's go over to the spreadsheet now and start setting that up. Right, so let's call it widgets because um, we're going to create some widgets and we're going to create some headers here for the different fields that we want to show. Um, our first header is going to be name, our second header can be description, and our third header can be like price, not prints, price. Um, and then let's just put in some default random items. So I've um, been playing a lot of roguelike games, so I'm going to say sword, shield, potion. Uh, this potion will stop you getting thirsty. And we're going to put a description for sword for great for fighting off monsters. And shield, which I've spelled wrong, so I'll respell that I E L D. Yeah. Uh, and a shield, what is a shield for? Um, defend yourself against attack. Now let's put some prices on these. Our sword's going to be $24, our shield's going to be $12, and our potion is going to be $1,000. All right, so we've got our nice little database here created in Google Sheets and how do we get this into our web app to display those items over here? The first thing we've got to do is share it. So we're going to go to the sharing settings and we're going to say get link and we're going to make this anyone with the link because it's a public website and all of this data is public. So it's basically fine to have it as public. So that creates this link and we're going to copy it and say done. Now we're going to go back to our web app here. How do we fetch this data here from the uh, spreadsheet and put it into our web app? So we're going to use the, whenever you want to fetch data, use JavaScript's uh, fetch um, function. So we're going to say fetch. Well, actually, first of all, let's set up a variable to store our URL in. So let's say const URL. And we just use const there because it's a variable that's not changing. So a bit of an oxymoron. But yes, it's uh, going to be a constant. It's going to stay the same. Now, to get the correct URL, what we want to do is actually change this part at the end here where it says edit USP equals sharing. And we want to change that to, let me just look this up. Uh, we want to change to export format equals CSV. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say export question mark format equals CSV. And that does what you think it would do. <clears throat> it's going to pull this spreadsheet, the one that we've shared here, and it's going to pull it out as formatting with a CSV format. So it's a comma separating format. So now we want to fetch that into our web app. So we're going to put the URL in here. And we're going to say, so fetch, um, the fetch function uses promises. What that means is like, after each call you do then. So First do this thing, fetch the URL, then, and you want to do the next thing. What we want to do is create a tiny little anonymous function in here, which has the result, 
and we're going to just say result dot text and this is some um, ES6 syntax you don't really need to worry about it too much all, all it's saying is uh, it's the same thing as typing this function result return result dot text so we could we could put that in there instead but it's just a more concise uh, representation so after we fetch our URL we're then going to ask uh, the browser to turn it into whatever we get back uh, into text and then we're going to say console.log actually I won't bother pulling up the console what I'll do is say I'll print it to the screen so before we can print to the screen we need to get this main tag here we want to put some text inside this main tag so what we're going to do is say const main equals and we're going to use document.query selector now what this function does is it's a lot like CSS um, it basically allows you to create a selector for any item inside the HTML page and we want to select the main tag so we're just actually going to write main in here if you wanted to say get something with an ID like if our main had an ID of app you could say hash app the same way you do in CSS to address that but let's just leave that as main and we'll get rid of that ID there so yeah what that's going to do is find this element <coughs> main and put it into the variable main uh, the constant main and then what we're going to do is once we get this result here which will be the CSV text we're going to just say main dot inner HTML equals CSV text so we're going to just dump the whole thing into here so we can see what we get back Okay, now if you hit save in sling code it auto reloads so we'll do that and we'll wait a couple of seconds and up it pops it's fetched our CSV text from our Google sheet that's great now what we want to do now is actually parse this out so that we've got some kind of data structure where we can um, we can use it to display something intelligently so let's actually change this here to say to a, a more verbose function and just say function csv text so we're doing now we can create a multi-line function between these uh, braces here and what we want to do is uh, take this what's returned from the google sheet and parse it out so a very simple way to do that actually is um, using csv to json so you can find this library on npmjs.com uh, it's the package name is csv to json and then right down the bottom of the page there's this section called browser usage so browser usage um, and here we can grab this script tag from a CDN so we're just going to pull that library from a CDN and stick it into our front-end code here uh, we'll put it under this meta tag so I've just copy and pasted that so let's just show you that again so in the CSV to JSON page we've we've gone into the browser usage section and we want to embed the script uh, embed the script directly in our page so we've just grabbed this second one here which uses cdn.rawgit and we've copied that whole thing control C and we've pasted it into our HTML code here in the head section so now we've got this extra script being loaded now what that will do is make the CSV to JSON command, uh, function available to us so let's try it if we look at the documentation for CSV to JSON, it's quite simple to use. Um, you just say create the new CSV object and then you can say from file or in our case we want to say from string. So from string. What that will do is parse that string into this nice uh, representation here. So let's do that. All we're going to do is say CSV dot from string and CSV text. And this also uh, is a promise based function so it also returns a dot then now you can put the then in here but you can also put it if we return that here so we go then and we start a new function and let's just so what will be returned from this is the result of this which is parsing out the CSV so we'll get our actual CSV data now what I'm going to do is in this main tag so we can see it clearly I'm going to dump a code tag in there so I'm going to say main.innerHTML equals and then let's add a code tag now normally you would want to use a proper 
front-end library for generating tags. You don't really want to be bashing strings in, but for the sake of this and to keep it super simple, uh, that's what I'll do. Um, and then we want to say json.stringify um, CSV. So, and then add the closing tag. So what this is doing is json.stringify is going to turn the CSV tag into a nice representation that we can understand and put it between these code tags. So I'll just save that. Now you might notice when it's loading, it's, oh great, that's worked perfectly. So that's what our data structure coming back looks like. You can see that we've got this array of objects and each object has a key of name. So you've got name, sword, name, shield, name, potion. Um, so we can then use that to uh, fill out the rest of this page properly. Before we do that, I just noticed something, which is when you save, there's no feedback about what's going on. So if the user has a slow connection or something like that, they just see a blank page. So it'd be nice if this said loading while it was loading this up. So let's just go here to where we've uh, accessed the main um, tag. And we want to fill this main tag with, a little, with the word loading. So before we do the fetch, <clears throat> we're going to say main dot inner HTML equals we'll just give it a p tag <coughs> say loading yep so now when I save it we should see loading and then the data will pop in once it's loaded yep great just makes a bit uh, better user experience right so We've got our data back. Let's just comment this out for a second. So we do that with a couple of forward slashes here. And we're going to say now, what we want to do is fill this page with uh, this these items. So I'm going to put them, I'm just going to do a nice simple layout with an H3 tag for the title, a P tag for the description, and maybe a strong field for the price. So let's go. So we're going to say main.inner HTML plus equals I'm going to give it a h3 tag and we're going to say csv dot wait actually csv contains an array of items here I'm trying to access them directly which isn't going to work so what I really want to do is loop through the items so I'm going to create a for each loop here I'm going to say csv dot for each so for each of the items in the csv we want to say and I'll create a new function row so this so what's going to happen is for each row in the csv each one of these it's going to call this function once right and row is the uh the object which is going to come through so now we can take what we were working on here and say row dot name so now what we should see is all of our names listed in H3 tags once they load. There we go, sword, shield, potion. Now we'll add the description. So we'll just copy that line and paste it. Let's say description, and we'll put that in a P tag. Sword, great for fighting off monsters. Shield, defend yourself against attack. And now finally we can put a strong tag in here. Actually, I might do this on a separate line. So main.innerHTML plus equals, closing the p tag, but before we close it, we'll say strong row.price. And there we go. We get that $24 there quite sure why it has appeared on a new line, but them's the breaks. So that's pretty cool. We've got our Google Sheet and we can test that this works properly by, we'll insert a new line between sword and shield and we'll call it, uh, so we'll say insert one below and we'll call this new object um, scroll. Read the spells from this scroll and we will say $15. And we don't even have to save, it just saves automatically. So if we run this again, we should now see we've got a sword and we've got a scroll. Reads spells from the scroll with $15.
So as you can see, there's a really fast way to update a static site just by pulling stuff directly from a Google Sheet and uh, rendering it however you like. Um, yeah, so finally, let's try adding one more column. So we'll say um, magic. So is this a magic item? So a sword is no, a scroll is yes, a shield is no, a potion is yes. So we've added this new key. What we're hoping is row that should come into our row. So we should have it in our data structure with this heading. So it should be row.magic gives us this field. So let's create a new line, which is row.magic. And we can just put the word in here, magic. And we'll save that. And now we should see $24 magic, no, magic, yes. Just put a space in there to make it a bit cleaner. So $24 magic no, $15 magic yes, the scroll is magic, the sword isn't. Yeah, so that's that shows you how easy it is to add new um, columns to this database, this very simple uh, flat database, and they appear pretty much straight away in your web app. <clears throat> so I hope that's useful for you for creating uh, neat little MVPs and stuff like that, getting some data in there quickly. Obviously, it's very easy to edit a Google Sheet, so that's a major advantage of it. Thanks very much for watching.